Welcome to this joyous occasion. Please be seated. Friends, we are gathered here in the presence of God to join this man and this woman in holy marriage, which was instituted by God in the beginning of creation. And I quote from the book of Genesis, and the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh thereof. And the rib which the Lord had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Marriage was regulated and sanctified by the Holy Commandments and was blessed by our Lord Jesus Christ and is to be held in honor among all people. Let each of us therefore remember that God has established and sanctified marriage for the welfare and happiness of all people. By his apostles he has instructed those who enter into this relationship to cherish a mutual esteem and love, to bear with each other, through all the ups and downs of life to comfort each other in sickness, trouble, and sorrow, and in honesty and industry to provide for each other, to pray for each other, and to encourage each other, and to live together as the heirs of the grace of life. Will you, Brendan, have this woman to be your wife? And will you commit yourself to her in all love and honor, in all duty and service, in all faith and tenderness, to live with her and cherish her according to the ordinance of God and the holy bond of marriage? I will. Will you, Retta, have this man to be your husband? And will you commit yourself to him in all love and honor, in all duty and service, in all faith and tenderness, to live with him and cherish him according to the ordinance of God in the holy bond of marriage. I will. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Uh, the family and myself. read his favorite scriptures, both of our favorite scriptures, Song of Solomon's 2, 10 through 13. My beloved spake and said unto me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. For lo, the winter is past. The rain is over and gone. The flowers appear upon the earth. The time of the singing of birds has come, and the voice of the turtle is heard again in our land. The fig tree putteth forth her green figs, and the vine with the tender grapes give a good smell. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Not used to speaking this loud, but I don't have a. I'm going to have to. I want you all to hear, so. If it sounds strange, it is a little bit. <clears throat> well, my message for you two today, let me enjoy this moment a little bit. <laughs> it's been a uh, wonderful courtship. And uh, I couldn't be happier with your choice. And uh, so I have a few words of advice for you. you told me to keep it short. <laughs> word that kept coming to me as I thought about this over a few days was the word honor. The word honor means to revere, to respect, 
to manifest the highest veneration for in words and in action, to adore. Ephesians 5.33, honoring your husband, brother. First, this is addressed to you. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she revere her husband. You've been counseled on that. You've read books on it. I don't have to say anything else more on that, I don't think. We'll keep that short. <laughs> Honor your wife. <coughs> Ephesians 5.25 Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. What a beautiful and honorable and a challenging thing that's been given to you. To love your wife as Christ has loved the church. A few words of experience you you will go through distant times that's just a given you go through times where you feel separate from each other and I almost feel those are spiritual times there I really feel that Satan takes hold of those times to keep you from expressing yourself as you should There'll be times when you may get angry with each other. Be angry, but sin not. And what I would say to that is, in your anger, let your words be seasoned with salt. You're going to have times, but watch what comes out of your mouth. I say that because God has prevented me from saying things sometimes, and I'm glad he did. Because you really don't meet him at the time. Brendan, one thing that's hard for us men is we tend to take our wives for granted. They're always working for us. Preparing dinner, just so many things. Just remember to praise her. Always show how much you appreciate it. Because if you get into that rut where you don't, you'll stop appreciating it. It's in, it's in expressing that you, you really realize. It's like because we thank God and praise God, it's there that we start to realize how much he's done for us. Proverbs 31 28 says her children arise up and call her blessed her husband also and he praiseth her my third part about honoring is the most important part probably the part that's oh yeah and by the way but no this is the most important part is you honor God and you honor God by trusting him and you honor him by praising him. and God had ten covenant names in the Old Testament that began with Jehovah I'm gonna share four of those quickly and then a fifth that's even as special. Jehovah Shalom. God is my peace. God is my well-being. My soundness. He will be that to you. Know him by that name. Jehovah Sid Kinu, God is my righteousness. 
we know as Christians, He is our righteousness in the sense that He sees us righteous. But He will, in those strains of life and sins we struggle with, He will become your righteousness in your actions as you look to Him and praise Him. That's why He's called Jehovah Sid Kinu. And there's Jehovah Rafika. God is my healer. Whether you've known God as your healer, you will need God as your healer. And He is, as He always has been, He heals our bodies as well as our hearts. And one of my favorites, Jehovah Jireh, the name given on Mount Moriah, when God provided the sacrificial lamb to Abraham when he was about to sacrifice his son. They say God is often the God of at the end of the rope. That when we trust God and he expects us to trust him to the end of the rope, where there's nothing else except his word and his promise, he will be Jehovah Jireh to you. And last but not least, Emmanuel, God with us, God in us, the hope of glory. The greatest verse you can put in your heart is, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, but not I, but Christ liveth in me. May that awareness overtake you. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. May it swell up in you, who loved me and gave himself for me. That ends my homily. As all closer here as in olden days a family patriarch could as God led pray a blessing upon his children I trust God will give you that blessing today flesh of my flesh bone of my bone heart of my heart Brendan you will are now a son to me. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The God who has brought me through many a danger, toils and snares and trials, God who has saved me from evil, and delivered me with a miraculous hand. May he be that to you. May he heal you when you need healing. That your years upon this earth, you may enjoy to an old age. May he bless the fruit of your womb and your loins. May he bless you with love that lasts for years. May he keep you from all evil. And his blessing be upon both of you. And in your oneness. In Jesus' name, amen. Brendan, repeat after me. I, Brendan, by him. I, Brendan, by him. Take thee, Reddit King. Take thee, Reddit King. To be my wife. To be my wife. I do promise and covenant. 
I do promise and covenant. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. To be your loving and faithful husband. To be your loving and faithful husband. In plenty and in want. In plenty and in want. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Brother, repeat after me. I read a king. I read a king. Take thee, Brendan, by him. Take thee, Brendan, by him. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. I do promise and covenant. I do promise and covenant. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. To be your loving and faithful wife. To be your loving and faithful wife. In plenty and in want. In plenty and in want. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. These rings as you all know represent their commitment to one another. The ring is unending. So may your love and faithfulness to other each other be. Okay, Brenda. Repeat after me. Retta, this ring I give you, in token and in pledge, of our constant faith and abiding love. And abiding love. Brendan's ring. Red, repeat after me. Brendan. Brendan. This ring I give you. This ring I give you. In token and in pledge. In token and in pledge. Of our constant faith. Of our constant faith. And abiding love. And abiding love. We will now have a hand fasting ritual. Hand fasting is a tradition from the Celtic culture. The phrase tying the knot came from this tradition. Both sides of the family have Irish blood, so we feel it is fitting for them. Russ and Alan, who are Brendan's parents, are bringing up a, their family tartan. This is the tartan of the McPherson clan, which is their clan. And they are, we are tying the knot. <laughs>
By the authority committed unto me as a minister of the Church of Jesus Christ, I declare that Brendan and Retta are now husband and wife, according to the ordinance of God and the law of the state, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Whom therefore God has joined together, let no one put asunder. You may kiss the bride. <laughs> There will be a receiving line in that direction. You will see it as you proceed there. And of course, the social hour proceed to the barn. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Brendan Byham. Yeah. 